Hey, hello everybody. Very, very warm welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel here on the world of YouTube. Delighted to have you on board and thank you for stopping by. This is a wine educational channel which is designed to help those of you really getting to grips with the world of wine for wine examinations to understand it more and to, of course, smash your examinations out of the park. So what have we got here? This is a Bordeaux series, and this is on series five, wow, of the Bordeaux series. That is a picture, by the way, of Chateau Costestonella, which we'll talk about later. Um, so yes, we're in series five, the left banks, and here are the six parts of the Left Bank series. Now, the this part and part two will be available as free content here on the world of YouTube. But parts three through to six, Saint-Julien to pesac léonard will only be available on my e-learning portal. That's over at www.winewithjimmy.com. Go visit, go subscribe. You will not regret it. If you have any comments or questions or concerns, well, you can get in touch. The best way is to comment on this video below. Whilst you're down there, there's a little button that says like, click that. And whilst you're down there, there's a button that says sub subscribe, click that as well to get weekly updates. Okay, so we're talking about our most northerly commune. We're talking about Saint Estef on this first section. So let's take a look at the overall map of the uh, Bordeaux region. There you are. And we're going to be looking at the Omidoc to begin with, because that's where most of our communes will fall upon. So that's what I've just drawn in here. So we're going to get very specific with the villages. So let's have a bit of a look at that. Here you go. Uh, and we're going to identify Santa Steph for you as well. So just before we do, the Omidoc, just to reiterate, is the sub-region which is located um, north of Bordeaux City. So it's this area, it's the kind of dark purple on this map. And it includes some of those very famous communes or, or villages. Now, the, um, the famous four are located on the Gironde to benefit from the real moderating effect of the Gironde. Uh, so you see saint Estef, Pouillac, Saint-Julien and Margot, the famous four. Uh, also dominated by gravelly soils, of course. Now, let's have a look at our one. Here we go. saint Estef has been identified just here. It is the most northerly of our communes in the Omidoc, uh, and it's the coolest in terms of temperature. Maybe, who knows, in terms of uh, its kind of style, who knows? No, but it's coolest definitely in terms of the temperatures here. Uh, and uh, that will certainly play into the wine style that we've got coming up very shortly. Um, now, what in terms of plantations here? So at 40%, it has more Merlot planted here than any of the other main four. So the total for that Saint-Julien, saint Estef, Pouillac, Margot, this has the highest numbers of Merlot, as it can ripen quite successfully here, and it's well suited to the clay soils um, towards the river estuary. So we'll find that there is a bit more clay found here in the saint Estef area. Cabernet Sauvignon, though, does make 50% of plantations, and it performs best on those gravelly mounds that we find uh, also in saint Estef, but that go across most of the left bank. Uh, and here's a bit on this geology for you. So remember that we have, of course, gravel across a lot of the left bank, but here in saint Estef, a bit more a uh, bit more clay. And you'll see that in this picture. This is a picture of a vineyard of Chateau Costes Donnel, uh, some of their very old vines here. But you'll see there's a kind of a, a, a kind of a muddy clay. You'll see that there is definitely some a little bit of limestone and some pebbles in there as well. But this wouldn't be necessarily what you would immediately think is a classic left bank soil where you've got those mounds of pebbles around each of the vines. It's much more uh, much more clay based in the soil there. Now, the clay soils has, of course, great 
water retaining capacity, which of course is going to be a positive in years where there are where there's less rain. So in those sort of drought laden, um, dry summers, uh, this is actually a major benefit in Saint Estef. So what about the style? Well, we have that cooler climate in Saint Estef due to it being a bit more northern. And it really has a reputation for making more rustic wines, maybe some wines that have some rough edges that will really come into their own with time in bottles. So they certainly require age. Um, but there are some St. Estef wines that are also softer and more accessible, uh, especially from the warmer gravelly soils where there can be also with that clay content where there could be Merlot found in it. A bit more reproachable Merlot grape variety can often add that kind of an edge to it. Now, I like St. Estef's rough edges. Um, if you compare it to the commune immediately to the south, Pouillac, Pouillac is often Pouillac is powerful. Pouillac is perfect. St. Estef has that sort of, you know, that charm and that rustic edge to it, those rough edges, which can be af absolutely uh, wonderful. Uh, you know, maybe... I, I don't like the quest for perfect perfection, but I like just those little bit of impurities to it, potentially. Some famous estates here before we go into the Google Earth video. So here um, there are no uh, first growths okay, found in St. Estef, uh, but there are uh, second growths. And we're going to list two second growths, which we find here. So Chateau Montrose and then Costes Donnel. Uh, and then I'll also mention a third growth, which is Calon Segur as well. So here is Chateau Montreux, the castle itself, and then the label to the top right hand corner. It's known today for rather powerful, full bodied Bordeaux wine, but in fact, it wasn't originally known for that. Um, the, the old area here, way off to the north, was actually an old hunting estate. Uh, and according to local legend, when the heather flower here was in flower, the hillsides turned a pink. Uh, and remember that pink in French is rosé. So this is where we get Montrose for Montrose. So meaning um, that kind of hill of pink because uh, the heather would turn this colour. Uh, and now that would be um, viewed quite easily by the sailors going up and down the Gironde. Uh, it's not a huge dominating hill, of course. There are no real big, huge dominating hills around the left bank of Bordeaux, but still it had prominence nonetheless. Now, in May 2006, Jean-Louis Charmoulet sold the estate to the Boyges brothers, who have the Boyges Telecom Company in France, uh, and they added it to their quite large business portfolio, and uh, started to invest heavily in it. So it's now been under quite a, a long stewardship under the Boyges uh, partnership. So that's Chateau Montrose. Then we have um, the one that was the holding picture at the start of the presentation. That is Chateau Costestonel with its famous pagodas, uh, which, which really do rise quite majestically across this landscape. So a, a wonderfully well-defined chateau very romantic and, of course, exceptionally uh, uh, photographed uh, this uh, this beautiful castle. Now, the name uh, of Costes Donnel comes from a chap called Louis uh, Gaspar Destonel, and that's where the Estonel bit comes from. Uh, and he founded the estate in 1811. Uh, now, the owner preferred to sell his uh, sorry sell his wine directly to his customers instead of trade it through the place de bordeaux uh, and he he really did export these across numerous parts of the world and a large proportion was sold in india and in the orient uh, and it was that connection to India that has really inspired a lot of the very unique and quite striking architecture that we see at Costa d'Estanel today with those pagodas, for example, that you find here. Um, Costa d'Estanel was sold to the Carmelet family that owned um, uh, Montrose uh, as well. Uh, and they continued to the estate uh, till 1917 when it was bought, bought, uh, bought by the Gineste family. 
Uh, and eventually, the grandchildren of Fernand Ginesté, Jean-Marie Pratt, Yves Pratt, and Bruno Pratt took over ownership and management of Cos d'Estonel. Um, there there's a bit more of a recent history behind it as well, but the wines of Cos d'Estonel are very highly sought after. Uh, and there are other estates as well found uh, in saint Estef that I'm not mentioning. That's La Fon Roche, which is a fourth growth, and also Chateau Collaboré, which is a fifth. Uh, but before I do wrap it up, there is one last one, which is a third growth. That's Chateau Calon Segur. Uh, and this is quite a famous one. You see, that's the estate. Top right is the famous label, which has Chateau Calon Segur in a heart. And that's mightily important. The property was owned by Nicolas Alexandre de Segur, which takes the, the name Segur, of course, uh, who also owned Lafitte and Latour. So a wonderful uh, amount of ownership in, in these very famous estates in those days. Um, but he apparently uttered very famous words, uh, which really has led to the heart being on the label. Legend has it that he is quoted saying, I make my wine at Lafitte and Latour, but my heart is in Calon. So an old famous quote. And of course, that now really has given rise to the label that we find of Calo Segur. So most recently, the figurehead of Calon Segur was the charming and quite stern Mademoiselle Denise Gascoton. And Madame Gascoton ran the estate really at her own direction, but she passed away at the age of 87 in September 2011. And in the following year, Chateau Calon Segur was sold for 170 million euros, which is about 215 million dollars today's, today's exchange rate. Uh, and the uh, Sur Surravenir Insurance was the large company to buy it amongst a couple of other smaller stakeholders as well. Uh, wines are a bit not as powerful, I think, as Costa Donnell or Montrose, but certainly charming nonetheless with Canon Segur. OK, before we wrap up, let's have a look at this Google Earth video, uh, 3D video, just to give you an idea of St. Estef AOC. So here is the Bordeaux region, of course, with the two rivers, the Garonne and Dordogne, running into the Gironde confluence, the estuary. Let's have a look uh, at the left bank where we are going to go to um, the most northerly part. Here is saint Estef in the Eau Medoc on the Gironde, remember benefiting from that moderating effect as the famous four villages do. Uh, so located there and it's got those very, very gentle undulating landscape. Now in the southern section bordering, bordering Pouillac, you have Chateau Costa Stanel that we just talked about with the famous pagodas. Uh, then just a little bit up from that, but closer to the Gironde, you have Chateau Montrose. Uh, remember today owned by the Borges uh, brothers, the Borges Telecom Company. And then towards the northern part of the Appalachian, we have the third growth of Chateau Calon Segur, remembering that my heart is always in Calon Segur. So three, the three most famous ones, really, two second growths and a third growth found in St. Estef, giving you an idea of the AOC. Okay, there you go. Okay, so that brings me to the end of the St. Estef uh, village section. Uh, part two, which is on Pouillac, perfect and powerful Pouillac, is another free video. You can watch that here on the world of YouTube. Uh, parts three through to six will only be available on my e-learning portal. That's www.winewithjimmy.com. If you have any comments, questions or concerns, please pop this in the comments section below this video. And if you do find yourself in London, please come and see me at one of my establishments for a class, a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now. Bye bye.